special awesome viewers and welcome to my latest walkthrough which is of course the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. So obviously the first thing one must do when they start up this game is if it's the very first time you need to select what language you want to play in and for me that is obviously of course English. And following that, you must select your file and enter your hero's name. And obviously, I'm going to stick with the name that everyone knows me by. And that is, of course, Crimson. Of course, the lovely name Crimson. Ha! I don't know why I ever stuck with that name, but it's cool. Gotta like if it's cool. So, pretty much this game is about good prevailing over evil. Yes, I think that's what most games are based on now. But yes, um, pretty much uh, quickly going through what I've just been reading, or what, you've, what you've just been reading actually. The hero is actually this kid who lives in a forest called Kokari Forest and he starts off without his guardian fairy which is what most kids in this forest have. The other interesting fact about these kids in the forest is that they never grow up or really grow old, kind of like Peter Pan, for those who are familiar with the story. So yes, this is pretty much just a foreboding scene. You kind of get a grip of who your villain is and who your hero is. Oh wait! He's got his guardian fairy there. <gasps> Doesn't that tell you something? Ah, uh, yes. Green skin. Uh, yeah, green skin. And evil horse. Yes, I think you've just picked up on the fact that that's our evil villain for this story. Okay. Game begins. Navi. Navi, where art thou? Come hither. Oh, Navi the fairy, listen to my words, the words of the Deku tree. Dost thou sense it, the climate of evil descending upon this realm? Malevolent forces even now are mustering to attack our land of Hyrule. For so long the Kakari forest, the source of life, has stood as a barrier to tearing outsiders and maintaining the order of the world. But before this tremendous evil power, even my power is nothing. It seems the time has come for the boy without a fairy to begin his journey. The youth whose destiny is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth. Navi, go now, find our young friend and guide him to me. I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly! The fate of the forest, nay, the world depends upon thee. Okay, so just point now before anyone pays me out for it. My voice acting sucks, so I'll, I'll do my very, very best to voice act this game. So, pretty much what just happened then was Deku Tree was pretty much just telling Navi that our hero's time to begin his quest is now, and obviously, with an introduction to Navi, our pain in the ass guide. Why she's a pain in the ass? Well, you'll pretty much pick that up why as we go along in this walkthrough. Um, pretty much all that this scene was is just a quick glimpse around Kokari. And yeah, quite a neat little forest we got up here, quite peaceful. And Navi's just arrived in our sweet little house to find our hero snoozing and being lazy. Hello, Crimson, wake up! The great Deku tree wants to talk to you. Crimson, get up! No, I don't want to get up. Hey, come on! Can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy girl? Yes, I'm breaking the third wall. might be confusing, I might just change it back to boy. I know, it depends how long we keep this act up for. You finally woke up! I am Navi, the fairy! 
The great Deku Tree asked me to be your partner from now on. Nice to meet you. Uh, that's not good. The great Deku Tree has summoned you, so let's get going right now. God. Right, she's demanding. And already she hasn't started annoying me. Okay. So all you pretty much have to do is use the control stick to walk yourself out of the house. And you get this little, little scene where Saria walks up to you all enthusiastic. Probably because we've just finally woken up. I don't know. Yahoo! Crimson! Oh, I left out the hide, but who gives? Not me. She's not that important. So anywho, uh, basic controls. Uh, you control stick to run about. Z to pretty much uh, look forward with your camera. C up to get your first, first, first person view. So that just helps with looking about. Uh, your A button, which is the blue thingy jiggy up there as well, that says grab at the moment. Pretty much all that A button does is allow you to interact with your surroundings. So, yes, so regardless of what you're doing, the A button will change. And C up also acts as a way to talk to Navi whenever she goes, hey! In that annoying voice. The one that will piss me off throughout this walkthrough. Okay, so... Pretty much the first thing you must do before going to see the Deku Tree is head over this little tunnel here and climb through it to get this little area of the Kokari Forest. It's what I call a subsection of it. Uh, just look over here and you'll find a blue rupee which is worth five rupees. Uh, make sure to collect ru rupees throughout this game, they're quite handy, especially the beginning, which is right now. Uh, just walk through here, walk through there, and press A on the treasure chest where we'll find the first important item that we need to see in the Deku Tree, which is the Kukari Sword. And I'm just going to skippy all this because I can just explain this in about five seconds. And yes, it is a hidden item that I will not be returning. Haha, <laughs> not borrowing it. So anywho, this is pretty much your start menu which can be accessed pressing the start button. Uh, quick navigation is pretty much going left, press Z, press, going right, press R. So the screen you want to equip your sword with is this one, which is the equipment subscreen. All you have to do is put your cursor on the sword, or your Kakari sword, and press A. While I'm here I'll explain the rest of the um, menu. Pretty much this is your item menu. At the moment we've got no items, so I really can't explain that in much detail at the moment. Here is your map. And at the moment it's just showing that we're in Kokari Forest and the more we go through this game, the more this map will fill up. Also, this map will also change when you're in dungeons. So instead of showing the over overworld map, you will be actually seeing the dungeon map. And here, this is another one I'll need to explain later on, the quest status screen. So as you can see, there's nothing there, so I'll just leave that for when the time comes. So now that we've got our sword, all you have to do to bring out is press your B button. And yes, as you just saw then I chopped the sword, uh, sign in half, which is something you can do with the sword. So once you've done that, you can just climb out or crawl out of the tunnel and re-enter the main part of Kokari. Now, I'm just out here, I'm just going to show you the basics of sword. Pretty much Z target to target on whatever you want. So obviously I'm target on that sword. Uh, not sword, rock. Sorry, I'm thinking way too far ahead here. Okay, so obviously... Oh, I've got rupees. Yes, doing this will help you get rupees. So when you're standing still or moving forward, you can roll. Moving backwards and pressing A will allow you to backflip side to side or left to right. If you press A when you're doing that you can jump to the side like so. 
Now, as normal, you can press B to bring out your sword. If you're not moving, you press B and you do a vertical slash. If you're moving or pressing forward on the toggle, you can jab and side to side, left to right, you'll do a horizontal slash. And if you just press A with your sword out, you will do a lunge attack, which does some pretty major damage, so that's nice to keep in mind. There's also a couple of other sword techniques you can do, but you don't really get them until later in the game. So hopefully I can do the next item within the five or four minutes that I've got left. So pretty much now we just need 40 rupees, and as you just saw then there was a blue rupee there. Uh, you can also find rupees in these bushes here. So just walk through them and you'll find one or two rupees, depending on how lucky you are. And there you can just jump across here, which is what I actually recommend. Because if you walk into a house and walk back out, or really walk into the shop and walk back out and jump across those platforms, you can get an endless supply of blue rupees, which is always helpful if you don't want to take the long way and walk across or walk the majority of Kokari. So the next blue rupee that you can find is over here. Without falling off, walking across these bridges, collect that. And, ow! Ah, my head! Ouch. Right. So the last blue rupee is actually in here. And before you actually go in there, this little Kukari kid will talk to you and she pretty much just says if you Z-target onto people far away, you can still talk to them. Now the last rupee was actually behind there. It's a little hidden one and it's, it's pretty nice to know that it is behind there. So once you got 40 rupees, go to the shopkeeper, talk to him, can toggle over to the right and put your cursor on the Deku shield and buy it. Okay, that's the last item that we need. So pretty much the same deal as the sword, uh, press your star button and you go over to your equipment subscreen and equip it via there, which I will do now. So yes, and one final thing, to save on this game, press B on the start menu and it will bring up this little sub-screen asking would you like to save? Yes, I would like to save. Okay, so that's pretty much the introduction to this game. And the next video will actually be going to the Deku Tree and starting our first dungeon level. So until then, this is Lady Crimson saying ciao for now, but not forever. Ciao!